Another round of Russian missile strikes has hit the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia. The region's governor says a school was among the buildings attacked on Tuesday morning. Two rockets hit a car dealership, killing one person. Moscow has been shelling the region intensely. More than two dozen people have been killed in the last week. Ukraine says it will not be intimidated by the wave of strikes. Explosions on Monday killed at least 19 people and injured around 100 in several cities across the country. The U.N. has joined the U.S. and the European Union in condemning these attacks. But Russia's president says there are more to come. Rory Challenge is in Kyiv. Rory, air raid warnings sounded across Ukraine again this morning. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, active air raid warning has been on for at least three hours now. That's why I'm wearing uh, this body armor across the whole of Ukraine. We understand that Russian strategic bombers, Tupolev bombers, have been up over the Caspian Sea region uh, and launching more cruise missiles at targets uh, in Ukraine. Uh, the latest that we know of is that there were at least two that were intercepted over the Kiev region. In the south, uh, Odessa, Mikolaev, uh, it seems like a number of, uh, of drones have been intercepted there too. At least one got through to the central city of Vinitsia, though, uh, and hit a power plant there. And as you were just saying, Zaporizhia continuing to bear the brunt uh, of night after night of strikes from S-300 missiles. Now, these are older and cruder uh, than the cruise missiles that have been launched at other parts uh, of Ukraine. They're essentially an air defence system which has been adapted to hit ground targets. Not very accurate, but still damaging enough, as we've seen in the pictures there, hitting a car dealership, a school, uh, killing one person. It's why uh, President Zelensky is stepping up his calls for sophisticated air defence systems for Ukraine. He says this is an absolute priority. And meanwhile, Rory, Ukraine is still taking stock of all the attacks that took place yesterday. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that yesterday was a step change, really, for, for the country. Not since the beginning of the war has there been such an onslaught. Uh, so many cruise missiles uh, and drones launched at targets across the whole country. So we know now that 19 people died, another 105 uh, were injured. Critical and civil infrastructure targets were, you know, the main objects hit. Uh, we know that there were targets in 12 regions uh, and the city of Kiev. 30, fi 30 fires began, all of those are out now. 300 settlements uh, around the country, towns and villages are still uh, without power. In Kiev itself, uh, they are planning rolling power cuts around the city, different times, scheduled at different times, uh, to try and balance uh, the power supply for the city because uh, there were uh, at least three power infrastructure targets hit in those attacks yesterday. You know, the, the, the intent is clear, isn't it, from Russia. Uh, with all of these strikes, the, what they are trying to do is to degrade the civilian critical infrastructure of the country and with hits on town centres, city centres, to instill as much fear into the population as possible. Rory Challenge reporting live from Kyiv. Thank you very much. Ukraine's ambassador to the United Nations has condemned Moscow for targeting civilian sites. He was speaking during a session of the UN General Assembly. Today, terrorist Russia shelled the capital city of Kyiv and many other Ukrainian cities throughout the country with at least 84 missiles and two dozen UAVs, energy facilities, residential buildings, schools and universities, museums, and crossroads in the city centers were among the targets that the Russian Defense Ministry later declared legitimate. Our diplomatic editor, James Bays, has more from the United Nations in New York.
Russia uh, was very unhappy with the way things uh, developed in the General Assembly. There were a number of procedural votes, none of which went Russia's way. Uh, and at the end of um, his time in the General Assembly, the Russian ambassador told me it was an outrage. He said in his time as ambassador, uh, he'd never seen anything like the way the General Assembly business was conducted by the president of the General Assembly. He said it was wrong and it's not the way business should be done at the United Nations. Now, what the Russians had been hoping to do by procedure is get the vote that we're going to have at the end of this session uh, as a secret ballot vote. And that's not the way uh, the UN General Assembly normally votes. Normally, when you, a country votes in the General Assembly, everyone gets to see how they vote. Uh, but Russia was defeated in that, and it didn't like the way the procedure was handled by the President of the General Assembly. What will happen now is this session will continue. We think it's most likely, because there are lots of speakers, that the vote, the final vote, uh, which is on Russia's annexation of Ukrainian territory, will take place on Wednesday or perhaps even uh, Thursday. Now, the votes on procedure perhaps give us some idea of who is on Russia's side and who is not. And certainly, it's pretty clear from those votes, I think, uh, that when it comes to the vote on annexation, on the actual subject this is all about, uh, then Russia is not going to win that vote. Uh, James Bay's reporting there. Ukraine's air defense systems are set to get more advanced. In a phone call with a Ukrainian leader, U.S. President Joe Biden promised more support. Shiha Bertansi has more now from Washington, D.C. We've got the readout from the White House. Joe Biden expressing his condemnation at the attack, his condolences to the loved ones of those uh, who were killed or injured. But then the readout goes on. President Biden pledged to continue providing Ukraine with the support needed to defend itself, including advanced air defense systems. Now, we know already that the Pentagon says at least two, two rather, uh, surface-to-air missile systems will be in Ukraine by November. That's what they say. And, an, and another six have been pledged, although those may take years to arrive because these aren't just off the, off the peg, off the shelf. They aren't coming from the U.S.'s existing stockpiles. They have to be contracted and built. Uh, Western nations apparently rather unwilling to give their own surface-to-air missile systems to Ukraine. They, they say that they need them themselves. These systems can attack drones and missiles and helicopters, we understand. So that, that's the, the air defense system part. I don't know whether this means that, you know, there's some, we'll hear more announcements about the perhaps a speeding up of the supply. Then, to go on with the, the readout, Biden also underscored his, his ongoing engagement with allies and partners to continue imposing costs on Russia. And now, this week, there'll be plenty of opportunity for that. We have the virtual G7 meeting on Tuesday with, with heads of state, uh, virtually meeting. And then later on in the week, we have in Brussels, the meetings of NATO and the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. That's um, a grouping that was set up in April of, a, of almost 50 nations. And we have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Staff and the Defense Secretary already on their way to Brussels for that.